Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John's reports for the 29th. Well, we've been battling up against this uh, resistance here of the ABM yellow, uh, well, for nearly a week. Unable to really move past it, and we get the slow deterioration of magenta below, and really the NASDAQ was reflecting a much weaker position. And yes, NVIDIA reported stellar earnings and that, but at a certain point, uh, how far can you go? Um, <laughs> We've been just expecting a move that been uh, somewhere in between the two resistance zones uh, right down here, coming down to our 55.59, which we actually hit uh, in the post market. Uh, coming back to it was our low uh, 55.61, so then a half point. And it's never going to be quite perfect, but that's pretty darn close. Um, from an NQ standpoint, actually it was uh, rather decent, didn't make it to the lower band uh, from it, but this is going to equalize the NASDAQ relative, and you can see it's been a strong rebound, even though uh, NVIDIA was down quite a bit in post-market now, we're pretty much back to neutral, so much to do about nothing, but uh, completely uh, erasing the negative move here, uh, still in a negative zone, and we're reaching this critical point here of magenta versus uh White MBI. So shorts activating slightly within it. Uh, the pivot here becomes important. If magenta pivots back up, you're going to get a strong reaction back to the upside, which would probably break through this and equalize it to uh, the S&P. Uh, but a MBI white move above, and then we would expect to come down to the lower range here and go from there. Uh, clean as simple as that. As we've talked about, uh, we had the uh, orange. Uh, caught between cyan and red in this particular phase here with the steel bouncing back and forth that kept us in a bit of a continuation zone uh, but then once orange came pop up above here on the uh, steel that was an additional sign of weakness which is what we saw on the move back down to 50 percent right here uh, we did get a dip of uh, mbi below uh, the extreme here uh, into the purple range and of course the shakeout's been negative for the nasdaq uh, and a divergence from where the s p was so you know it just takes some time to work it out of course treasuries you know again this gets into the whole thing the, the, the reality is inflation we like to measure as far as pricing of products but at the end of the day inflation is really just a byproduct of how much new money is being created by the fed every day now we know that the government is creating a trillion dollars every three months are you going to stop inflation and keep it at two percent with that no plain and simple now, they can disguise it and you can hide it in all sorts of other numbers and then try and reflect it only in a few different areas. But in the broader sense, uh, they don't have a handle on it. So, okay, yeah. So shift the focus. Change the narrative. Um, because that's all this is, is a narrative game. And that's what they're going to continue to do. Uh, oil being in a... Still an uncomfortable spot that's not going to lead to any kind of uh, deflationary pricing. So uh, your rate of inflation merely is affected by where you end up with longer term oil at this particular stage, you're still going to be above the Fed's target. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So if you cut into already a liquid situation, create more liquidity, uh, generate more money, uh, you're going to have inflation get out of hand. You know, some of the Fed governors have talked about that because they can see it. They're not completely stupid, but they also understand the narrative and how things work. Um, the fact that, you know, you, this is all job owning, you're going to get eventually that you're retracing all the way back because the Eurozone is not doing anything special and they're not improving from a growth standpoint. But this is going to continue. And this is where people say, well, gold should be retracing. Well, no, no. Until you stop producing a trillion extra dollars every three months in deficits of creating new money, basically, um, plus it's not going to stop. So, and you lower rates and, uh, you know, you would think that gold will suffer from that now, but of course it's being spread out and into the market. Um, you know, Bitcoin uh, coming back to its uh, previous algo level and bounced off that one briefly. So it's just a back and forth, no real uh, excitement at this particular stage. And again, we've talked about the reasons stealing, you know, there was a lot the uh, talk still about the Mt. Gox volumes and things that still exist. And of course, some of that's got to get worked through. But you're really in an interesting situation because miners are going to have uh, growing difficulties. So the question would become, does the hash rate decline? 
uh, you know, there's some technical stuff with that as to, you know, whether things go, but without the price moving up to new highs, uh, really hard for them to sustain uh, miners uh, in this configuration. ETH right back down to its 23%. Big fall off here on the short on that one. So they could see some support right at the 23% uh, for a move from there. See how it plays out. From a 50K, we've been talking about this. We had the upside range at the 56.53 here and the downside at the 55.76. We actually blew through that briefly. Uh, that filled all the positive extremes going all the way back. We had some that were as high as this level and the earliest ones going back were the original pop, which uh, we filled right here. Um, and then these ones already get taken care of. So it was literally this uh, second set, which was right there, and we filled it exactly in today's early market move. To me, that's clean and simple. We had the expectation of it with the MBI white. It was merely a matter of waiting for that breakdown to start. So you begin your short there. It gets confirmed here in a strong way once that crosses over. Um, but you've had straight blue uh, under uh, gray all this time. No question about that. Then the flip over took place right at the beginning of the 23. Um, but it was not sustainable as MBI White took the lead again and we ended up dropping for that uh, move to the new lows. You know, quick and easy. Uh, just seems so straightforward to us. Here's what it looked like from a five minute chart here uh, early morning. Not a whole lot of enthusiasm, wiped out all the call volume, and then boom, bring it back up. And then all the new puts that have been added in are going to get hammered at the open because things are going to rise. And that's what we're seeing here. And the game continues. So all in all, beautiful action. Volatility is excellent. So it's not going to slow down anytime soon because the uncertainty still is there. And at a certain point, uh, you're going to get to that next Fed moment where they don't cut rates, and if they don't cut rates, then it's like, well, how, when do you believe they're actually going to do it? Um, and if they do it, it's just an insanity move. Uh, and they may, uh, but it would be crazy because you're just going to create uh, rise inflation again, and you have to go right back over it. In fact, you probably have to go higher than you already have done uh, to contain things, or you have to control the spending, one of the two. There's no other way around it. Uh, and as you treat, you know, 35 trillion now in debt and climbing, um, where's the limit? <laughs> We're going to find out soon. I mean, we accelerated quite quickly. And that is the nature of uh, Federal Reserve Systems with the banking. You, you reach a point where it starts to grow exponentially and it's unsustainable. And then things just fall apart. Sorry, I hate to break it too, but that's just how every Federal Reserve System has always worked because you're always going to continue to inflate at exponential rates because the spending gets out of control. Plain and simple. As always, though, anything relevant, I'll put it on the Skype chat, but we'll just continue to trade what is. Have a good one.